There was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, and David grew stronger and stronger, while the house of Saul became weaker and weaker. And sons were born to David at Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon, of Ahinoam of Jerizel, and his second Chiliab, of Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel, and the third Absalom, the son of Maka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur, and the fourth Adonijah, the son of Haggith, and the fifth Shephatiah, the son of Abital, and the sixth Ithriam of Eglah, David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron. While there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? Then Abner was very angry over the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head of Judah? This day I keep showing loyalty to the house of Saul your father, to his brothers, and to his friends, and have not given you into the hand of David. And yet you charge me today with a fault concerning a woman. God do so to Abner, and more also if I do not accomplish for David what the Lord has sworn to him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul, and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. And Ishbosheth could not answer Abner another word, because he feared him. And Abner sent messengers to David at Hebron, saying, To whom does the land belong? Make your covenant with me, and behold, my hand shall be with you to bring over all Israel to you. And he said, Good, I will make a covenant with you. But one thing I require of you, that is, you shall not see my face unless you first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. Then David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife Michal, whom I betrothed at the price of a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband Paltiel, the son of Laish. But her husband went with her, weeping after her all the way to Bahurim. Then Abner said to him, Go, return. And he returned. And Abner conferred with the elders of Israel, saying, For some time past you have been seeking David as king over you. Now then bring it about, for the Lord has promised David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines, and from the hand of all their enemies. Abner also spoke to Benjamin, and then Abner went to tell David at Hebron all that Israel and the whole house of Benjamin thought good to do. When Abner came with twenty men to David at Hebron, David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. And Abner said to David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel to my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with you, and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. So David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. Just then the servants of David arrived with Joab from a raid, bringing much spoil with them. But Abner was not with David at Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Joab and all the army that was with him came, it was told Joab, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and has let him go, and he has gone in peace. Then Joab went to the king and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came to you. Why is it that you have sent him away, so that he is gone? You know that Abner the son of Ner came to deceive you, and to know you're going out, and you're coming in, and to know all that you are doing. When Joab came out from David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner, and they brought him back from the cistern of Sirah. But David did not know about it. And when Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside into the midst of the gate to speak with him privately. And there he struck him in the belly, so that he died, for the blood of Eshael, his brother. Afterward, when David heard of it, he said, I and my kingdom are forever guiltless before the Lord for the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. May it fall upon the head of Joab and upon all his father's house, and may the house of Joab never be without one who has a discharge, or who is leprous, or who holds a spindle, or who was slain by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, slew Abner, because he had killed their brother Asael in the battle at Gibeon. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes and put on sackcloth, and mourn before Abner. And King David followed the bier, and they buried Abner at Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king lamented for Abner, saying, 
should Abner die as a fool dies. Your hands were not bound. Your feet were not fettered. As one falls before the wicked, you have fallen. And all the people wept again over him. Then all the people came to persuade David to eat bread while it was yet day. But David swore, saying, God do so to me and more also, if I taste bread or anything else till the sun goes down. And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as everything that the king did pleased all the people. So all the people in all Israel understood that that day that it had not been the king's will to slay Abner, the son of Ner. And the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? And I am this day weak, though anointed king. These men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too hard for me. The Lord repay the evildoer according to his wickedness. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men, and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his merciful love, for his wonderful works to the sons of men. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground a fruitful land into a salty waste, because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and there he lets the hungry dwell, and they establish a city to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards, and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, he pours contempt upon princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But he raises up the needy out of affliction and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness stops its mouth. Whoever is wise, let him give heed to these things. Let men consider the steadfast love of the Lord. And he said to them, O foolish men and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them, who said, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were saying this, Jesus himself stood among them, and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened, and supposed that they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do questionings rise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me, and see. For a spirit has not flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer on the third day, rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. 
you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. Our sinful desires breed every type of conflict and division. Adam and Eve's sin not only brings their expulsion from the Garden of Eden, but it is also shortly followed by Cain's murder of his brother and division at the Tower of Babel. In the aftermath of Saul's death, sin and conflict continue as the Israelites are divided between David and Saul's son Ishbosheth. When Abner tries to reconcile the factions, his attempt is foiled, and Joab, desiring revenge for the death of his brother Asael, murders Abner. Sin spirals into sin in this cycle of conflict, division, and death. The resurrection of Jesus overcomes this pattern of conflict. As they walked to Emmaus, Jesus interpreted to them in all the scriptures and showed himself to be the promised Messiah. He speaks consoling words, peace to you, and then gives the men by which this peace is to be obtained, that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached, and you shall be clothed with power from on high. Jesus has conquered the death spiral of sin and initiates a new era of peace, both in our relationship with God and with one another. How can the peace of Christ help you today to overcome conflict in your relationships?